Hola amigos, hola amigas, Dorian here from Uvalux. Welcome, bienvenido, croissoy, assalamu alaikum, chest, yaksimash, welcome to the channel. Uh, first off, I'd like to say a great big ho, a big hello, hola, to um, Guido in Argentina. Hola, Guido, Guido, Guido. I hope you are well. He is one of my subscribers down in Argentina. Um, don't cry for me, Argentina. Don't llores por me, Argentina. Entonces, I am here in the car. So I'll get to the point. I'm here in the car, and we have the dogs in the boot. Zach, Gilligan, Millie. Zach. 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 There's a head. Hey, hello, Zach. Right, sit down. Uh, we've got the dogs with us in the car. Uh, Habilux is away with work, and I am off on a bit of a road trip today. So you might see there, I have that Hoover Junior, that mixed one, that was refurbed. I also have my Hoover Portable strapped in. And down there we have my DC07 Yellow. Uh, first stop, we're off to Silly Sid, to Gareth of Silly Sid 123 that's his um, YouTube channel. Then we're off to Ripley. Ripley, we're going to go see Rob, Paul and George. George has a channel which is AEG123. Go and check it out. It's got some really, really, really good videos and old Vax on there. Really, really nice guy. So I'm going to take up the portable for the guys to see because they're also going to get their portables out and we're going to have a portable off with the three different types. So that'll be fun because they are my favourite old vintage vacuum. So, and the DC07 yellow there, uh, George is going to take a look at that because he says it doesn't sound right. So he's going to take a little look at it and uh, see if it is just maybe the sound from recording or if there is genuinely something wrong with it. So without further ado, I am here. I am ready. I have got my coffee. I got my coffee ready. And we are off on a little bit of a road trip. It's lovely and sunny. So sun's out, gun's out. Not really. I wouldn't put my guns out. Anyway, I got the roof open. So uh, we're going to let in lots of sunshine. The air conditioning's on so the doggies will stay nice and cool. And we're going to have a day out. So... Let's get on with it without further ado. Let's go to Gainsborough. I got myself to Lincolnshire and I am here joined with Silly Sid123. Hello. Hello. So I've been dropping some stuff off and picking some stuff up. So I just thought it would be nice to actually do a face to face. Try. Both of us in the same shot. Don't forget to check out his channel, Silly Sid123. He's got some really good uh, videos on there for vacuums and twin tubs and all of the varied stuff going back to when you were. I was about 14. So that first video was when you were 14. Yeah. Oh my God. But you did look like a lot younger than that. I know. I, I, I got to 18 and I was like that. So I, I was a very young looking lad. Yeah. So it's very, very nice to actually get him on the camera so you guys can see him as well. So yeah, like I said, check it out. So my next stop is going to be Ripley in Derbyshire. So it's goodbye from him. Say goodbye. <laughs> and see you guys in the next bit. Bye. Okay, everybody, I am here in Ripley. I am in the, what do you call this room? The washroom. The washroom, yeah. the museum washroom. And as you can see behind me, we've got washing machines and vacuum cleaners galore, of which I will explain a bit later. And I'm also here with George. Hello. Hello. <laughs> From AEG123. 
So I've mentioned this channel numbers of times, so go and check it out and subscribe or there'll be trouble. And we are here, so I'm going to stop the camera, turn you around, and then we'll have a look and yeah, I'll show you what we do. Right, so we are here with my yellow DC-07. And George said to me, it doesn't sound right. So I've brought it up and we're going to diagnose. Well, I know I am got a clue. We're going to diagnose. So fire away. Um, the um, All it is, is when you, you switch it on. It does sound a little bit louder than it should be. And the only thing uh, it is, is because these old... Because this is um, a British made one. Right. These older ones had very narrow cyclones at the top and they tended to get blocks up um, very, very easily. They Why more... did they decide to turn the cyclones round upside down? What is the thinking behind that? Well, that was the whole point of um, the root cyclone. Um, th I've got something that explains it and I can't remember it off the top of my head. Oh. Um, but it's all to do with square rooting of cyclones and so they literally designed it with the cyclones turned the other way around yes and it only went past the 07 yeah and um <laughs> yeah that's it uh, as this model kind of proves uh, it's not always the best because um well if you once i've got it got it apart yeah i'll show them then and i'll be able to explain okay all the bits and pieces yeah this one's the same i'm trying to get it to uh I'll work out where the light's actually coming from. It's there. No, it's not showing up. So the inside there then is where it's blocked. Yeah. Or there's particles. But like, I didn't realise all that dirt on there. Mhm. Mm it's just um, just there. Probably where it joins the yellow part here. Yeah. Is like one of the strengthening bars across. Right. Okay. And they always get, as so I say, get hair and stuff caught around them. But that is kind of like normal. That's not bad. Oh, yeah. That's, no, that's fine, yeah. Because there's ones where they're just sort of like completely and utterly... Yeah, some of them just get completely... Gunked up. What it is, is because they've got that little centralising yeah. thing in the middle, if the fine dust ever gets past that point, yeah. it just gets stuck and doesn't fall yeah, out when you empty the bin. Okay. The, um, hmm. the way... To get those little bars out is you need something with good suction. still blocked and the rest of fairly that one's still blocked as well oh, you wouldn't know would you no
Okay, there's a bit more oomph in that Mila, so it should. It's cleared that one. Mm. That one's cleared. That one's just about. Mm. That one's cleared. The rest, I don't think the light's going to be able to... Yeah, uh, penetrate it. But it's definitely clearer than it was. Yeah. So I wouldn't have even known. Well, I guess I would have put put too much pressure on the motor then as well. Yeah, that's why I wanted to do it for you. I'll just try these. Yeah. Try it one more time, and I think it should be better than it was anyway. So there we go. That was George showing me how to clean out the cyclones of the 07. Um, that one still has one or two which are blocked, so I'm going to try and I can finish it off at home. Now I know what I'm doing, and I can do it with the other machines. So whilst we're in here, we'll have a little wander. Rob and Paul don't mind me having a look. And sort of like filming in here. And these are all their wonderful machines that they have. As you can see. I like that Electra. You know me in bright colours. I was just talking about that. <laughs> this one. Wow. What is that? That's a robot. That's unusual. Dirt Searcher. I got that one. Electra looks. I got that one. Not in that colour, I've got one the same as that. I like these ones, these are the original Electrolux. Let me spin you around. And here we go, the Molinex Major. This one is in better condition than mine. I do need to fix the light on it. And then we've got a DC01, an early one. An early DC01. It's really cool. I think it's because of the writing on it there that says... The lettering of Dyson Dual Cyclone and Electra. All looking very good, all very polished. That does look like an like that reminds me of a car that does. It's very Hoover Junior-ish with the shape of this and the pedal. Robot. That is so cool. That is basically like a that is just like a Hoover Junior. Wow. I'm gonna have to ask him with the dirt searcher. I'm gonna have to ask him about that. That's pretty cool. And that Electra as well. Again, very juniorish, juniorish. Very nice. There we go. We got some more down here. Oh, that looks very modern. Oh, I quite like the. I like the handle on that one. That's nice. That is the Hoover Freedom. Yes. Oh, it's got its guts ripped out. Oh, they've got their guts ripped out. And there we go, back to three ugly dogs. So there we go, let's go back inside. So it's a few hours later, we've eaten full and uh, we have now got an array of vacuum cleaners here for you to see. Now you can see behind me, I just showed you some pictures there of these three portables. There we go, three different colours, we've got my green one, we've got George's orange one, Rob's orange one and George's yellow one. Now these guys, I want you to speak because I haven't got a clue. What year, what year are these from? Um, 60s. They're from the 60s. Right. Are they? I think the green one's 60s. Yeah. I, the, the orange one, I think, is about 69 to 74. I don't know about the yellow one. The yellow one's a US one, so we're not really up on... Which is the one, this has got the one that's got the longer hose, is it? Yeah. So if I put this down, what we, one thing we did notice, the difference with, if I just swivel them gently. Well, I think it's because the, the orange one is the sort of most deluxe model. That's why it's got the cord rewind and the longer hose. So yeah, so this one has got the cord rewind in it, which is different to my one and to um, George's. The only thing is the orange one was made in France. 
So whether or not that had a, had a difference. So this aspirature was made in France. This, no, the thing we noticed as well was if you look in the centre here, this larger one, my one is the same as that, this does have a longer hose um, by about what, was it a foot? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, about a foot difference in hose. And of course the cord rewind in there, which does make it a lot easier. The thing about it is, is with these ones, the plug and everything fits inside, whereas this one you do see that the plug is hanging out the side, but it doesn't make any difference to be honest. I think it's a bit of a design flaw, they could have made it a lot neater. Yeah, they could have made it, there's a big space in there, they could have made it so the plug actually recessed inside it. You know, that could have come over a little bit and that could have been recessed, it could have been made differently. But uh, yeah, for the deluxe one, I think it's really good. So those are the portables, oh shoot, and that is another design flaw as well. They slice these off, when this comes down, my one's the same, it slices through the uh, mechanism for the pip. I don't know why mine is, mine sits like that, there's nothing to get in the way on that one, I don't know why. Probably, yeah, yeah I see what you mean. So. There we go, those are the portables. Next we have this one here. Now this has already been featured on George's channel, AEG123. There we go. This is a Hoover Free Motion. Now when I first saw it, I thought that this vacuum cleaner was from the 90s. Sort of like mid-early 90s, but it's not. It's actually from the late 90s into the noughties. Now that one there is 2007. This is a 2007. So I, I really didn't think that they were that new, I have to say. Not because it looks old, but because, you know, it's mid-2000s and it's a bagged vacuum cleaner. It's made by Hoover and it's really powerful. So if I switch it on... Plus, the back of this is just like a Porsche, the Porsche Boxster, it actually raises up as sort of like airflow. <laughs> mm. Now I would have bought this vacuum cleaner just because it does that. <laughs> but the, this turbo brush is a really good one, is it designed on sort of like, is it stolen from like a pneumatic or this is their own design? Um, it's probably um, the German What's the German company that make? Oh, that. It's probably Vesselberg. one of those. Vesselberg, um, is it? It's probably one of those designs. Just oh, with okay. the Hoover fitting on it. But I do like the colour of it. I think it's very, very nice. I, I really do like it. The hose is nice and chunky on it. I really like the handle. That is really com um, comfy to hold on to. The hose on it is quite reinforced and it's really thick. I'm really surprised on that. And then the tool then goes down there. There's a, yeah. That's uh, the tool. But yeah, there we go. So there we go. That is the Hoover Free Motion as well. So that's it for this little bit. I'll see you in a minute. So here we have now, which is the Electrolux 610 rebranded German, what's it say on it? Progress. Progress. Uh, from 19... 86 86ish. 86ish and uh, yeah so we go you'll see it now being demoed on this awesome carpet <laughs> Didn't that do well? Look at the carpet lines on that. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so, right, so the next one that we're going to be demoing is, I like this one because it's shiny and I'm a magpie, <laughs> is this Electrolux 2000 and, um, what did you say it was? 
five and six Electrolux Sanitaire. Now, I have seen these for sale when I was in America last year, um, but they don't make them in the UK, apparently, brand new. Now, the one thing I will notice, I'm going to, if George can turn it back upside down so I can see it's um, money shot, is that, which is basically just like an old-fashioned Hoover Senior, with the, you know, it's a dirty fan cleaner with the metal brush roll and the belt. But it just works so well. I've seen these. So now we're going to, someone's going to do a demo on it. Go on. The one, the one very good thing I have noticed about this cleaner is that this carpet, prior to this cleaner being put on it, only ever had a Sebo X4 on it for 12 months. Okay. And the first time we used this on this carpet, we put a brand new bag in it, brand new belt, the brush roll's immaculate it spins perfectly the cleaner's There's barely been used the cleaner's cleaner. barely yeah. been used that there is absolutely no fault with this cleaner whatsoever and it pulled absolutely zero out of this carpet so it just actually <laughs> goes to show that the argument between dirty fan and clean fan is an absolute moot argument yeah there's no difference between the two especially where SIBO is concerned um this just pulled absolutely nothing out. There was no grit. There was no fine dust. <laughs> it was just um, fibers. There was just there was just the a bit of cat hair, which is was to be expected for a, a you know it would have been, it'd been a day before it actually cleaned the carpet. Yeah. It was purely cat hair. Um, the one thing I will say is that this carpet was laid brand new. It only ever had the Sebo X4 over it, mm. uh, and um, underneath the carpet. I you know, clean that long, you know, several times before the carpet fitters came in. So it actually just goes to show with a brand new carpet that's got no dirt underneath it, brand new underlay, brand new carpet, that a clean fan cleaner can actually keep up um, just as well as any dirty fan. Um, mm. So it, it makes that whole argument really, you know, non existent. Yeah. Um, so um, we'll do a quick demo on this. Okie dokie, let's go. <laughs> Wow, that's lifting the carpet right up. Is it hard to push? vibrating I was doing a lot of agitation. I could really feel the floor vibrating with it. It was really pulling up the carpet to it. I like that. Me likey, it's shiny. Okay, here we're back again with the sanitaire. We've emptied out the old bag. And now there is a new bag in there. And this was what was inside. So we're going to use this monster of an Electrolux sanitaire to vacuum it up.
wasn't a match for it at all, was it? All gone up. I was worried. I did think, because I, I did a big fur mess test with my Kirby, and it did not like the ginormous clumps of fur. It was catching around the belt. But this one is fine. Not a problem at all. Okay. Okay, so this I noticed when I was walking around in the... Um, laundry room uh, with you and I was like it's a junior oh it's not that's very weird but it does look like a junior so this is an Electra made by Goblin as I was informed do you know what year this is that's 72 to 76 77 I've not seen one of these ever like on eBay or I definitely haven't seen any other video on one but it's really cool it appeals to me because number one it's bright orange it has a bottom fill, but this bag has got like a piece of cardboard in it. What is that for? The, um, that's actually the fill tube. It's actually a soft piece of plastic. It's like a really thick bag. Uh, and um, it, when the airflow goes through, the fill tube inflates itself. Okay. So it does very much look like a junior. That's what confused me because I'm not an expert. Um, and when I, I think it was the other one, how do you remove the... Yep, that's it. There we go. Very much like a junior. Because I asked the guys if it was kind thing, of like... thing to note about this is, unlike the junior, you actually got storage for... Oh, yeah. Oh, that's belt. clever. And it's a flat belt. Right, okay. So that is very reminiscent of a um, dirt searcher. The way that that it's on let's flip it over what's that for that's the height adjuster yeah so you adjust the height oh yeah from the back wow okay that's cool and how do you get the handle to go down it's just a, a, a friction fit you just push it to all oh, right okay it's got a good grip to it so that is different because that's all sealed Height adjustment from the back, wheels here, metal brush roll, beta bar, and nice thick strong brushes on it. This is the motor fan, is it? Yeah. So this has definitely got a bigger fan to it than the standard Little Juniors by the looks of it. What's the wattage on this one? It's 300 watts and the Junior is, was it 275 the Junior? Yeah, yeah so round about that. slightly yeah. higher than the Junior. Wow. So, but these were sold then around about the same time as the standard juniors. Yeah, the, yeah, they were pretty much a like for like imitation, cheaper version. These were cheaper? These were cheaper, and in some aspects are actually better than the junior. Well, I was going to say that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't want to say, but yeah. it did. It does look better yeah. than a junior because the um, this whole mechanism seems a lot stronger than just an orange button at the side or the. <laughs> The um, quite flimsy on and off switch with the um, pedal re uh, handle release. Uh, the if I raise you up, I think it's quite there. nice how they had an aluminium handle instead of a painted one, so it actually yes. kind of looks better than a junior did. There's and no paint to chip off. No, paint wasn't gonna no exactly, off. and then it's got this nice strong plastic rather than the rubber. This is more sort of like grooved, if you know what I mean, to grip onto it. I, I like that. I think that's really cool. Right, okay, so it also comes with this that George is going to demonstrate. A box of tools. Now, unlike um, Junior, the tools, if you unhook the belt, the hose just pulls straight on like that. There's no need for any converter. Look straight on. And better than the pan. What is the suction like on that? It's not great, but it does feel ever so slightly more powerful than the um, than the junior ones. It's not average for the yeah. time, is it? You've got the crevice tool. That fits in there. Friction fit. And you've got um the floor. See now that that design, that sp springs back memories from a child. That, that design. 
Quite similar to what electro cylinders used as well. Hmm. Uh, sorry for the interruption there, they were barking dogs. Right, back to this design. This reminds me of my childhood. There's something, somebody, uh, I've seen this head before. Because it looks like a face. <laughs> uh, so yeah, maybe I did know somebody that had one because this... Did they did, did, did they ever do a cylinder with the same they head did, as yeah. this? Yes, yeah. Probably that's what I've seen then. That was a standard sort of goblin design. Yeah. Of the 70s. And it's double I've sided. Definitely... You have the concentrated suction on that oh, side. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And you can clip uh, that on for your hard floors. And like. Like that. Uh -huh. Okay, that's clever. I like that. Do you know how much these were when they first came out? How much they cost? Off the top of my head, they were around about forty pounds. <laughs> which, when we did a, a currency converter, brought them out around about two hundred and fifty pounds in today's money. That's quite a lot. How much was the junior then? Um, I think it was about another five or six pound more which would have taken it up to about 300 pound in today's money god that's quite a lot isn't it yeah i like i prefer that idea than having to use the pan one like a, a difficult design having to dis the belt every time you use the tools you aren't yeah. stretching the belt any more than you need to for any amount of time mm. okay i think a little demo of this is in order okay let's give it a go Yeah, it does sound like a junior yeah it does well i like that that is very unusual i also like the design on the front which makes it look like a fake headlight that there <laughs> it does look like a fake headlight at the side okay there we go so that is the electra done and tested okay we're back with another vacuum cleaner this is the um, robot so from what i've been told this was when Hoover decided that they were going to end the lines of Hoover Juniors, they sold the rights to the design and the tooling and everything to a company called Robot. And they bought the rights to the design and everything and produced this, uh, but obviously couldn't call it a Hoover Junior, but is literally a modernised Hoover Junior. So if we have a look at the front, we can see the headlight. So this is basically like a dirt searcher. There's a headlight here, and you just lift up this flap, which I think makes it a lot easier to get access to the light, which is like a torch light, as George said. And then this then is the part where you put your tool, oh no, you don't put your tools in it. This is how you change the belt, isn't it, you said? Um, but do you have to take the um, brush roll off to change no, the belt? No. Um, yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah, the, this, it's the same mechanism underneath as a junior. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. 
And then, as you can see, the side is the same with the height adjustment. The bag and the fill and the tube and everything is still the same. They've slightly just changed the design of, of this. Um, if we flip it over... Sorry. Go on. <laughs> there we go. You will see that that just looks like identical to a Hoover Junior. Um, the wheels on the back, the design of this, the motor, this height adjustment, the brush, everything is exactly like a Hoover Junior. And they carried this running into the mid-90s, did you say? About 93. Yeah, about 93 when Robot decided that they couldn't make any more from it, so... Did Robot ever make any other cleaners, or was it just this Not one? that I'm aware of, no. There was two models of this. There was a grey and red one, and there was a grey and yellow one. So are, they, are these, were they made in Britain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were made in Britain? Yeah. Wow. So they did make some differences to... No, that's the same. That's the same. The, um, the bag hook at the top's different. Yeah, the bag hook at the top is different, as you can see there. Um, but if I open up the bag, you'll see the bellows look slightly different, but the same. It's a top fill bag. See, all that design is the same as well on the inside. And it's got a fetching. So, the, for example, with the red one, did it have a red cord? Did they match the cords yes. to the... Yeah. And how much were they compared to a Hoover Junior? Were they more expensive or...? I don't think they were much cheaper, but they certainly would have been cheaper, I'm almost sure, because you yeah, hadn't really got a brand name behind it. Oh, it's okay. So this was after those um, Compaq from Hoover, She's yeah. a Beautiful Mover, yeah. after that. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. Hoover, Hoover stopped with the Junior around about 1988 with the 1104. And that was when they decided to, to sell the rights to this design. And and then they came out with the Turbo with the, Powers then, was the, it? The Turbo Power was running from 82, 83 onwards. And they had the Turbo Power Junior. But they still kept the 1104 kept the, yeah. as right. the bottom of the line. Bagged, cheapest, cheapest upright. Somebody wanted something that they knew. Yeah. Yeah, for the old grannies. Yeah. yeah. Um. Although, in all fairness, between that and the Turbo Power Junior, really... There didn't seem to be much point in keeping both, although they that's, did. That's why they got rid of yeah. it. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I quite like the design of that, to be honest. It's a bit like what um, uh, Vauxhall Astra did with um, with their cars when they got rid of the old Astra design and then um, Deu brought out a line mm. of cars, but the interiors and the outside of it, they just look like a revamped old Astra. Yeah. So it's not the first time this has been done. It's been done with cars and now vacuums and goodness knows what else. Okay, so we're going to give this a little quick demo. Doesn't sound great. No, it needs to be serviced. And there we go. So that is the lovely robot. Okay, so everyone's going crazy about the Dyson V10, but it is not the first type of stick vac that was invented for that looked similar. We have this Moulinex Handy Vac. This is from the 70s. Is it from the early 70s? 80s, early 80s. Yeah. So this is literally the Dyson V10 of its days stick vac. Um, it has an amazing 250 watts made in La France. Model Deposé. Type 715210. 
So let me turn the camera around and we'll have a look what a Dyson V10 looked like in the late 70s and early 80s. Okay, now unfortunately this does have a cord, so it's not a cordless model. Um, let's, let's switch it on. C'est formidable. It's in really good condition. Look at the shine on it, considering how old it is. It comes with an array of tools. That's in carbon fiber brushes for hard floors. Yes, carbon <laughs> fiber for, <laughs> for your hard floors and parquets and laminates, definitely. Then you have a little mini carbon fiber <laughs> <laughs> brush here to go on something else. Uh, then we have a long carbon fiber then for doing your dusting for your laptops and keyboards because that's what was around at the time. Uh, we have this turbo tool, no, a tangle free tool because there's no tangles in that because it's straight suction so it's a perfect tangle free tool. This is a um, crevice tool, there's nothing much about that, a crevice tool. Here we have the extension wand, so I can attach it to myself with a strap. And then I can plug this in like this. This end then can go into the vacuum, and then I can extend it and have it double length. And I can do all my vacuuming needs, high, low, carpets, curtains, and wherever. Fantastic. So let me just put this all over. It's the flexible V10. <laughs> Et voila, Moulinaire handy vac. Right, I'm going to disconnect it and we'll have a look and see at the bag on the inside of it. Okay, so what we have to do is we pull this little clasp here. This opens it up. To get to the cyclone assembly. To get to the cyclone assembly, which is there. The it is a sealed technology. unit, sealed suction. Pepper flow bag. <laughs> There's a free bit of spider in there. Uh, it's got a transparent cyclone technology there going into it, so you can see the dirt. And the fan is down there for you. No, but in all seriousness, this was sort of like, you know, the height of sophistication for the late 70s and early 80s for the housewife who wanted to have something handy to do her drapes. Okay, so there we go. That is everything. I'm going to put this back in the box and we'll do a quick overview of everything we've looked at today. Okay, so here we are at the end of the video. Now we've gone through a number of machines today and tested them and had a look at them. I do love all those portables in a row. They look really, really smart. The Telios, I love the design of it. I think that's really cool with its Porsche uh go faster um air vent at the back i think that's pretty cool never seen one of them before so that was uh every day's a school day for me i like the electrolux that's really cool that electrolux sanitaire i'm definitely going to be on the prowl for one of them in the future uh we didn't feature this one um but is it is it is called an electra as well which is the same brand as that and this little thing which was bought in Poundland BM Bargains BM Bargains not Poundland <laughs> BM Bargains was actually really impressive I was really impressed with that so I need to get one for my mum so I will do a quick demo on one when I get one for her so it's the next day and I have got all the vacuums here now lined up in the workshop at the end there we've got the DC 75 We've got the Hoover Smart. We've got the DC-04 Distill. There we have a Hoover Dust Manager cylinder. And we've got a green and blue DC-07. Uh, I've got over there dc What is that one? Something in purple and uh, green. But I wanted a DC07 in the green and purple, so I got that one as well. So there we go. That is all the stash from yesterday's pickup.
And there is a bag of parts as well and a Kirby brush roll that will be used at some point. So my next video is going to be on, because we're going to have a look, and it's going to be on the distill. So that is the one I'm going to do a video of next. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed my trip around Lincolnshire today and Derbyshire. So please comment, like and subscribe for more videos. And I will see you all very soon. Bye y'all.